And here is a little look at the kind of harvest we've been getting for the couple of weeks following that tour video that I just did for you guys. What's up guys? Today I've got a rare double feature for you. I'm going to start the video off showing you an odd little garden gate repair that I did. You can see it right there. I think it turned out pretty cool. And then after that I'm going to give you a tour of my garden that you can see in the background. And that is pretty much it. I also want to give a big thank you to ButcherBox.com. They're coming on as a new sponsor, and if you're not familiar with them, they are an online subscription for healthy, free-range, grass-fed, and wild-caught meats and seafood. And uh, I will tell you a little bit more about them at the end. But now let's get on to the repair and the tour. Well, here is my odd little project for the day. I'm going to be making a repair to my DIY garden gate latch that I made probably six or seven years ago, just using some scrap materials I had on hand. I even have a build video of it, which isn't very good, but I'll put a link uh, in the corner of the screen. But anyway, um, it essentially works like this. Uh, you have a lever on the outside. You can simply push down to open the garden gate. And then it has a beveled end on this side so you can simply let the garden gate close naturally. But the problem is, is the spring that holds this up is starting to weaken just a little bit. So when we have winds, it starts to rock a little bit like this. And next thing you know, the gate is open. So today I think I'm gonna replace that spring, which I do not have a replacement, but I'm gonna do some sort of probably unnecessary pulley system that has a cable that goes up here to a pulley and then I'll have a counterweight down here. So totally unnecessary, but it's what I can do with supplies that I have on hand. So let me show you what I'm thinking about doing and then we'll install it. Well, I dug around quite a bit in all the places I keep random junk and this is what I found to replace that little bitty spring on the garden gate latch. I do realize this is overkill, but sometimes I think it's fun to try to figure out how to repair something with things that you have on hand. And for this little pulley setup, I think this is going to work pretty well. And I haven't spent any money because I had all this stuff on hand. This is a little swamp cooler pulley that I got years ago on clearance. I think I paid 50 cents for it. And at the time I had no idea what I was gonna use it for. Uh, this bolt will serve as the little axle uh, for that. And then this is a steel cable that will attach to the garden gate latch. And then on the other end, it's going to attach to this classic um, soldering iron tip. The name that is stamped in there is of my wife's great grandfather on her mom's side. So most or all of this is copper, so I'll finish sanding this off and I think it'll be a pretty cool little weight right next to the garden fence. Well, I would say it's probably 85 to 90% better, but you can see if I wiggle it enough, it will come unlatched. So I'm gonna try one more thing, adding a little piece of aluminum on top of, of here to make it a little bit more of a sharper catch for the hook on this side. 
and I'm gonna see if that works and then if that works we're gonna call this one a success. Well, I am definitely gonna call that 100% very pleased with it. And honestly, I think I'm more pleased with just the look of the whole mechanism. So I think I'm gonna call this one a wraps and uh, I think the next part of the video is gonna be giving you a tour of the garden, which I did I think two or three weeks ago when it was a little nicer and not so overgrown. But I will include clips from now with uh, everything fruiting and all the tomatoes. Uh, but most of the tour is gonna be, be when everything's a little more tidy. So, on to the tour. At this point, I am not quite sure what project I just showed you, but I knew I wanted to do a video of a short garden tour and some sort of project. So, that's what I'm gonna do now. That is my garden right behind me. You've seen probably some videos of me building garden beds. And it's a nice day. There's clouds out. There's not a lot of wind, so. I figured it was a good time for a tour. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you what we got growing. Okay, before I take you inside, let me show you the garden fence really quickly. This is a fence I built about 12 years ago just using standard 4x4 posts and 2x4s as the cross members. The wire fencing in the middle is half inch hardware cloth. The exact same stuff that I used for my chicken coop build that you may or may not be following. And then the gate is a standard half lap garden gate. I've made a couple of these on the channel before. And some of you may look at this and notice the diagonal is going in the wrong way. Generally supposed to come from the lower hinge, but I can tell you that it is 12 years old and has not sagged a bit. So I'm not really worried about it. And then the little garden latch that I have was an older project that I did a while back. It's a resettable garden gate latch where it latches once you close the garden gate. Definitely got some paint on it so it doesn't look that great, but it's worked perfectly for years now. So now I'll take you inside. All right, so here we are in the main garden area. You can see it is comprised mostly of raised garden beds and isn't the largest garden in the world, but it does provide us with a little bit of food and a lot of enjoyment. You may recognize these raised garden beds from the project I did last spring. This is my favorite version of the probably two or three different corrugated metal versions of garden beds. They are 21 inches tall and they use old roofing metal, some corner flashing, and then two by threes with two by four toppers. And I think what I'll do is just take you through each one of these rows and I'll talk about kind of some of the things we have growing and then I'll let you guys go. Starting with the first row on the right, you can see there are four raised beds. The two in front are my newer style that are about 21 inches tall and then the two in back are about 14 inches tall and they're about seven years old. So you'll be able to see the difference of how these beds age. Anyway, most of what we have growing in these are either crookneck squash, zucchini, or gray squash. And these plants have just been producing tons and tons of fruit for us. Uh, borderline almost too much. <laughs> I do enjoy zucchini and squash, but there is a point where you can definitely eat too much of it. Here are the older ones that are about 14 inches tall and they are about six to seven years old so you can see kind of how the wood ages but they still uh, perform a, the exact same function and you see there's a giant zucchini right there the second row is comprised of only three raised beds and the reason for that is because these closer two beds are three foot by three foot and the one way in back is four foot by just under eight foot and in these, I have a combination of peppers, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, and some companion plants that, again, I can't remember the names of all of them because my wife does most of this planting, but I will put them in the lower portion of the screen. 
You can see this bed is primarily all peppers. We've got some Anaheims, some bell peppers. The far side are snacking bells. And I think this one's just a green bell pepper. This bed has sweet potatoes, onions, again, some companion plants that I'll put in the lower portion of the screen, uh, rosemary, and I think that is it for that one. And then this bed is mostly cherry tomatoes up front here and a combination of sweet snacking peppers, bell peppers, jalapenos, basil, and probably something else in there that I may be forgetting. Uh, but you can see these are just loaded with flowers and these are all indeterminate. So we will get them in kind of big waves. We've just had our monsoon season, or it, that's currently going on. So everything is currently just flowering out. And I bet you in the next couple of weeks, we are gonna have just another onslaught of little tomatoes. And there's a few there where you can actually see some color. And now we will get onto these beds. So this bed back here is another one of the four foot by just under eight foot long beds. You can see we've got a combination of some beans that we just planted, a combination of bush and pole beans. And when those get a little bit longer, I'll add something for them to climb on. And then some corn in the background. We have some old lettuce that is still just powering through. And a few of the companion plants. Again, I'll put them in the bottom half of the screen. And then moving over to this bed, this is a four foot by five and a half foot long bed. We have purslane. Uh, that was, those were seeds from my sister. You can see right there, we have winter squash and, and the final two beds, which make up the fourth row of my garden consist of mostly tomatoes, peppers, and then some leafy greens over in this one. One thing I didn't point out is you will notice that I have garden hoops on some of these beds and that is just to allow us to put a little bit of bird netting for some of the plants that are a little bit more susceptible. Uh, but anyway, what's in here? Again, it's mostly cherry tomatoes, indeterminate. We got some basil down at the bottom, uh, snacking bell peppers, sweet bell peppers, jalapenos, Anaheims on the far end of it. I'll show you some closer ups, uh, some closer views of some of those. And then in this bed of mostly leafy greens, we have some kale, some uh, basil, we have some mint kind of interspersed, and uh, I think some Swiss chard, and I'll put anything else that I end up missing. And then looking back here towards where our fruit trees are planted, you'll see this just kind of pile of green. Well, most of those are just tomatoes that we didn't have room to put in the garden. So we just put them in old planter pots and you can see they are just taken off. They're all flowered out. And depending on when I post this video, I might wait until some of these are just loaded with tomatoes so I can give you some nice, uh, better shots of a lot of tomatoes on these. But like these leaves right here are almost to my collarbone and I'm six foot tall. So these things are just doing awesome. And here is a little look at the kind of harvest we've been getting for the couple of weeks following that tour video that I just did for you guys. Everything is really popping now. We've been trying to pick these zucchini a little bit smaller than some of those big ones I showed you on the video. Can you show me what you got? All these little tomatoes. Pretty good haul. And these are some of our zucchinis with a couple of little hybrids that have started blending with, was this the crookneck or the? A yellow crookneck and the gray squash and then the crookneck and the zucchinis. <laughs> yeah, anyway, these things have just been putting out, I don't know, we probably grab them a couple times a week. They just nonstop production. 
All right, guys, I think that is pretty much gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found it interesting and perhaps it gave you some ideas for various projects of your own, whether it's some little odd project like this, or perhaps it maybe inspires you to get a start at growing a garden. I do realize this is not the biggest of gardens, but it does provide a, a little bit of food for us and a whole lot of enjoyment. And uh, in addition to feeding our bodies during the spring and summer, uh, it feeds our souls pretty much most of the year just because if you've ever grown anything, just to see it start from a seedling and go up to what you see now, it's very satisfying. And just to come out here with a drink in hand and uh, you know, kind of look at the garden is very relaxing. And for a little bit more info on the sponsor of this video, ButcherBox, as I mentioned in the beginning, they are an online subscription service for high quality meats like free range chicken, grass fed beef, humanely raised pork and wild caught seafood. And I can tell you that my wife and I have been using them for close to four years now on our own dime and we have been very satisfied. If you are looking for really healthy, humanely raised meats, I would definitely check them out. Usually every month they have some sort of special promo offer like ribeyes or a turkey for Thanksgiving or something else that just uh, is like a nice little bonus for when you sign up. And if you like this channel and the content that I make, when you do sign up, I will receive a little bit of a kickback so you can kind of support me as well as getting uh, access to some really high quality meats. So with that said, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you on the next one.